Okay, I was talking to a friend of mine who is a professor at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, Dr. Peter Egley. And um, we were talking today, and we thought it might be a good idea to do a YouTube video on this. So um, let me go ahead and read the problem to you. And basically what we're going to be talking about is different compounding frequencies. And we said, well, what if you invest... Uh, $100 for 30 years at 10% APR, and we have no payment. We're not going to make any payments. You're just a one-time deposit of $100. What would the future value be over different compounding frequencies? And also maybe make a graph of it to see how it looks like. So for a solution, um, what we could do, we could have our compounding, and we could do different compounding periods. Uh, we could go all the way from annually to semi-annually to quarterly to monthly and the periods per year the compounding periods per year well uh, annual of course would be one quarterly would be four I mean semi-annually be two Quarterly would be 4, monthly would be 12, of course, uh, weekly would be 52, uh, daily would be 365, I guess I should put an S to make this plural, and an hourly would be equal to 365 times 24 hours in a day, minutely would be equal to 8,760 hours in a year times 60 minutes in an hour. And secondly, it would be equal to 525,600 minutes in a year times 60 seconds in a minute. And, uh, and then finally, continuously would be infinite. Okay. And if we calculate the future value... Uh, let's not make that bold. The future value would be equal to the present value, which is equal to, well, let's just go ahead and use the future value function. That's probably easier. So I'm going to use the future value function in Excel. It would be the rate, and the rate is going to be 10%. I'm going to F4 that to make it so it's uh, absolute, so I won't move when I copy it down. I always want to stay at 10%. And I want to divide it by the number of periods per year. And then I want to take it times. Well, no, we'll just leave it like that. Okay. And then and then the number of periods would be one period per year times 30 years. Now I'm going to skip the payment, so I'm going to do two commas. And the present value is $100. And we could do this in our head if we did it correctly. 10% of $100 is $10, plus your original $100 would be $110, right? But then you got to take it to 30 years. So if I make this one year, if I make this one year, that should change to 110. If I make it 30 years, well, it's going to be bigger because it's compounding over 30 years, okay? And then if I copy this down, so I made a mistake. Let's just double check. So I want to make sure I F4 this, right? Because I don't want it to move off that 30. And I want to F4 uh, this because I don't want it to move off the 100. Okay, so let's copy it down again. And let me put the formula in here. And you can see that over 30 years, uh, let me go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna slide the formula over, and let's do the difference between. And so I'm gonna go. This equals how many dollars difference is gonna be this minus this. So over 30 years, if I go from annual compounding to semi-annual compounding, that's 122 dollars difference. Now. I haven't done infinite. Infinite, the formula is going to be, I'm going to put the formula over here, but, but the formula is going to be equal to EXP 
and it's going to be to the RT. So the RT is going to be um, R times T. Yeah, so you have to do continuously compounding a little bit different. And uh, hold on, and I forgot to take it times 100, right? So it's going to be this. But that's, this is mass, so I'm going to make it a negative this times. Okay, so you can see there, let's go, go ahead and copy these formulas down so you can see them all. So you can see that there's a kind of a diminishing returns as the compounding frequency increases, you know, over 30 years. You know, hour, the difference between daily and hourly is a much. But from, uh, from annually, from annually to semi-annually, that's $120. Now, if you change this to 50 years, it even gets greater. All right. So depending on how long, it's going to make a bigger difference. 30 years is already pretty long, right? So let's go ahead and graph this just so you can see how it works. So I'm going to, I'm going to graph compounding and then future value. And let's go ahead and go insert. And I'm going to insert a, uh, a line chart. And you can see that as our compounding frequency increases, our future value is kind of like a diminishing return. It's almost asymptotic. And then finally, you know, there's really no difference between secondly and continuously, even over 30 years. Maybe if we go over 100 years, you might see some kind of difference. Okay, so so this shouldn't be negative here because, but we're having some kind of rounding error probably. It should be like, you know, it should be, this should be higher than this. So there's a rounding error with Excel. So anyway, um, so 30 years, you're not going to see that much. Better. But the point is, you think it's not linear, right? As you keep compounding more, you're not getting greater and greater return. It's like a diminishing return. So hopefully that's interesting. Um, you, kind of, you cannot kind of understand the compounding period. So you always have to, whenever you do these, you always want to make sure you always want to make sure if this is semi-annually, you got to have, if it's, it would be 60 semi-annual periods. So it'd be 30 years times two, right? Because you have this semi-annually, you're dividing that by two to make that semi-annually. So when you do the formula, you always got to divide the interest rate by the number of times per year and then take the, take the number of times per year times the number of years to get the periods. So you, always, you don't want to mix units. That's my point. So you got to be very careful there. Um, so hopefully that helps. If you like this video, my picture will come up. Go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, hit like. Make a comment if you think there's something you didn't understand. And uh, hopefully that was interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.